What does your recovery look like after scoliosis surgery, and are there any alternatives? After a diagnosis of scoliosis, many patients are told they may need scoliosis surgery. And very often, they don't really understand what that really is and what that could possibly lead to in the future. Scoliosis surgery is something called spinal fusion. Now, there are many, many different types of spinal fusion, but most commonly involves fusing the, the curve at the most tilted vertebra above to the most tilted vertebra below and going to the apex of the curvature and creating that whole curve into one solid bone. Normally, there are rods and screws that are attached to hold the spine together while it's going through its fusion process. And again, these now these bones or these joints that are supposed to be separate, those would be separate joints that move separately, are all now fused into one bone. And the goal is really to stop scoliosis from worsening, not really to correct the cause, because it's not a hyper, most cases, it's not hypermobility that's causing the scoliosis to progress. It's there's another cause, the curve is a symptom from something else. So it's not really addressing the cause, it's not curing scoliosis, but the number one thing is trying to attempt the curve from worsening. However, with, with modern techniques, they can get reductions in scoliosis during the scoliosis fusion and surgery, but the goal is really to stop it from getting worse. Now, the big question is, is how does spinal fusion expect, affect spinal health and function and health of the body long-term? Well, first of all, every case is different, and this will depend on very important variables such as the age of the patient, their overall condition, the severity of the curve, where the curve is located, is there any other complicating conditions like neuromuscular problems. But when successful, spinal fusion stops the progression at that time by eliminating movement and fusion of the area that's fused. However, you're eliminating function versus straightening. So basically, as a spinal fusion, does make the spine straighter. It does try to stop progression, but it eliminates function of the spine. It's a non-functional approach because if it was a functional approach, your spine would move better and function better. But the truth is you're making it straighter and you're eliminating function. And this is where most patients or a lot of patients, unfortunately, can be very disappointed with what happens as a result of the surgery. Even though their spine is straighter, they have a massive loss of spinal flexibility and the range of motion because the fused section of the spine no longer moves. We also know, unfortunately, that fused spines are more vulnerable to injury because they can't adapt to forces properly. And any injury that can causes, that causes movement of the body, like whiplash injuries, car accident injuries, could possibly disrupt the spinal fusion and cause more issues. Having a spine that's fused and held in place by rods and screws is not the same as trying to reduce the si- the, the curve naturally using corrective proactive results, meaning it's you're, you're reacting with a non, non-functional approach and this can, kind of call, this can cause problems. The other answer is, is this, is that we really don't know what happens to these rods long-term. We'd have no idea what happens to patients 20, 30, 40, 50 years post-surgery. And there's no real good data on this because it's a very difficult thing to study. And that's what a lot of patients get very concerned about is what is this long-term result? But we do know initially what happens. Initially, after surgery, how long does it take a patient to respond? Well, every patient heals differently, like right after surgery in terms of recovery, but there is some important variables. And of course, and the biggest thing is that the patient's age. The younger the patient, the more, li- the more likely they're gonna heal or respond better versus the older the patient. That's why scoliosis surgery is not normally recommended for patients that are, much, are older, 40, 50, or 60, because they don't respond well. The condition type, meaning how the size of curve and where the curve is, the severity, the number of vertebra fused, all these things can be can play a role in how fast you recover. Meaning some fusions can be uh, really small. Thankfully, they can only maybe be four or five vertebra, where others can be 10 to 12 to 14 vertebra. And those are gonna be much more complicated, much more difficult to recover than, than a smaller fusion. All right, and of course, it, were there any complications during the procedure itself? Was there an infection? Was there any kind of screws that didn't fully set? Was the diffusion not take? Is there an allergic reaction to the to to the actual hardware? All these things can play a, an effect on how fast you recover. But for most people, they're staying in the hospital anywhere from four to seven days, and then normally they're sent home, but normally they normally have to be on restrictions for some period of time until they have more assessments that are done normally 30 and 90 and then six months later. Very often patients will be put on pain medication because they have severe pain as a result of it and they'll be tapered off over the over weeks following the surgery. And the goal, what I believe is with most surgeries, is they're trying to get them off their medication within six to 12 weeks. 
in most cases, patients are cleared for regular, regular, regular activity, but non-traumatic activity within four to six weeks, meaning you're not playing football or contact sports or doing traumatic uh, sports within four to six weeks. You're normally doing regular stuff, like maybe you're walking and doing things like that, but you're not doing anything traumatic. Traumatic, um, any type of trauma to the spine, impact to the spine can unfortunately affect the way the surgery is recovering. So you gotta be relatively careful. Um, I believe what most people, most surgeons are recommending for that first six months until how the body can, the, the fusion can take place. Because remember the screws of the spine, the screws are just holding the spine in place while the bone grafts in between all the vertebrae are, are taking place to try to fuse the spine together. Now, unfortunately, sometimes those bone grafts don't, don't take place and it's only the screws that are holding holding the spine in place. And that can be more prone to failure as the, as the, as the person continues to grow or as they go through life. So the, hopefully both things are happening. Now, are there different ways to treat scoliosis? And of course there is, there's many different ways to treat it. And of course, the, what I'm talking about here is the surgical approach, which is the more traditional approach to treating scoliosis, is pretty much waiting until scoliosis becomes big enough and then considering surgery as your only treatment option. However, there are conservative treatment approaches, and these are more proactive approaches that provide non-surgical treatment options. And even to surgical level curves, conservative approaches can be used as an, as an alternative to try to reduce the curve and avoid spinal fusion. The biggest thing that I, that I tend to like more about conservative approaches versus surgical approaches is that conservative approaches tend to be more functional, meaning we're trying to reduce the curve without causing fusion and disruption to the spine for the rest of the, for the rest of your life. Meaning that fusion is permanent. It's going to be there forever. There's no way to unfuse something that you've already fused. And if there ever there was, I imagine it'd be more traumatic than the fusion itself. Where functional approaches, like I'm talking about these, uh, where this conservative approaches, we're trying to reduce the curve, but while maintaining function. Now, functional approaches, or what I can call a chiropractic-centered approach to scoliosis treatment. And the reason why I use the word chiropractic-centered approach, because chiropractors tend to think more functionally as opposed to more fusion or limiting or limiting function. And the goal is to, is to hold or withhold the normal spinal function while reducing the curve. Conservative treatment options include lots of proactive treatments that can be ap applied as soon as we find the scoliosis, meaning most conservative approaches may find the scoliosis at a smaller number, but then they normally don't do anything until the curve has become big enough to warrant this invasive type of fusion and surgery. Where conservative approaches, since they're not invasive to the body, if we find the curve smaller, we can treat it smaller. And we can, if, this, if you treat a curve smaller, you're much less likely to have a severe curve needing surgery. So that's the one of the other things I really like about conservative treatment is that we can treat curves much smaller because they're not nearly as invasive. The treatment plans are very customized to address the patient's condition, the variables associated with their scoliosis, their age, uh, the severity of, their, of, of, of course, their curve, but where the curve is located, if they have any other conditions as well. But first and foremost, all these conservative approaches, just like surgery, we're trying to address the scoliosis at a structural level, but unlike surgery, we're not using rods and screws and bone grafts, we're using therapy, rehabilitation, bracing, exercises, neuromuscular education, traction, vibration, chiropractic care to help restructure the spine back into a straighter position. Once we start to see structural changes within the spine, we can now expand that conservative approach to use more strengthening components, to use more rehabilitation components to help, to help maintain the spine in this corrected position. And we can also start incorporating more, more significant in-office treatments to get the very best results possible. Most conservative pro, uh, approaches also include home rehabilitation programs to help get the spine to sustain its reduction and also get the patient involved in being, being and understanding the corrected position of their scoliosis. And these are all customized prescribed home exercises and normally they're scoliosis specific. They're not just regular core strengthening or ab strengthening or low back strengthening. They must be scoliosis specific based upon the diagnosis of that patient. And the last thing I'll mention is that bracing can have a very big impact on achieving corrective results on a scoliosis. Now, bracing is only gonna be as effective as your, as your brace designer and as your brace fitter meaning plastic, not all braces are designed, as a, designed the same to do the same thing. Conservative braces are normally more aggressive to try to reduce the curve 
and have, have more of a corrective approach to trying to reduce the scoliosis, where traditional braces like Boston braces and Providence braces are more squeezing style braces that are just trying to slow the curve progression during growth phase. Since we use bracing as a corrective tool, we can use bracing at any level size of curve, meaning mild, moderate, severe, adolescent, young adult, late stage adult, where squeezing braces are only trying to slow progression during growth. Traditional braces are only used in adolescents while they're actually growing. The key thing with a, with a conservative approach is to work the scoliosis on a structural level to actually achieve corrective results by reducing the curve size. Just like all surgical procedures, spinal fusion comes with its own share of risks and concerns and side effects, where conservative approaches, since they're non-invasive, the side effects, the risks are much less and the benefit could be very high if you can avoid something like spinal fusion. So therefore, at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer a complete, safe, non-surgical treatment of results or approach to scoliosis that actually should have been shown to have proven results over years of taking care of patients here in the clinic. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.